I welcome you to Wally Bars Whiteboard Wednesdays and today we're going to be talking about the history of the nail gun. But first of all, the first method to actually drive a nail that springs to mine would be the good old hammer. And it's a good job because the hammer was the first ever power source for the first ever nail gun. The first ever handheld nail gun evolved from 1892 Pearson uh, patents for his design, um, but didn't really actually come into manufacture until 1907. And really, it wasn't, it wasn't a self-driven nail gun. It required a hammer and a striking plate, which would then drive the nail into your workpiece. Generally, they've been used for like building and construction work and what have you. Um, but you might say to yourself, why on earth won't I just hold a nail and hit it with a hammer? Well, you could say that, why wouldn't you? But the beauty about this particular machine is it had a reservoir to hold the, the nails. And it wasn't until we had the wire nails that it made this um, possible. You, what you do is you fill this up with all your nails. So there will be all loads of nails inside there. So you open it up, you put your nails in and you give it a good old shake and a rattle. And they'd rattle the way down until they get to the end here, and then you hit it with a hammer, and then it drives the nail into your workpiece. Lovely. Okay, it worked. Um, need to say that there were issues because the manufacturing of the nails weren't particularly reliable, so you get different sizes, and the wire might be different thicknesses, and all, all sorts of different issues. So yes, they worked, but they were problematic. So the Doig Manufacturing Company, who used to build crates and pallets, etc., um, built their own multi-nailing system but it was a stationary machine. The first actual pneumatic nail gun was developed by Morris Pinus and uh, he, he, he was involved with a very special project. It was the building of a very historic aircraft. It was the Spruce Goose. Are we done with this? <laughs> Welcome to my woodworking channel, Wally Bois. The place where you'll learn woodworking tips and tricks. And if you'd be most kind, hammer that subscribe button. Anyway, it's time to get back to the video. So, the Spruce Goose had a 98 metre wingspan and cost $2.5 million to produce. And this was evolved from the 1944 war effort. But it never got completed in time because the war ended. Good job and all. Small sacrifice, I suppose, but it wasn't that small. It was huge. And that's why they needed a nail gun. Because the construction of this aeroplane was so vast and it was made of birch wood, there was thousands and thousands of nails required to build it. And did you know what? It only flew once. A little bit wasteful, I suppose, but they didn't know. The Morris Pinus nail gun evolved because of the construction of this aircraft. But after the war, or post-war, we then had all sorts of things going on. Lots and lots of development, lots and lots of um, evolution of mechanisation, etc. And the nail gun was being developed by lots of different companies. And one particular company, which was Pneumatic, um, they developed their nail gun in the 50s and it was quite a success. And these were like the first collated uh, nail guns. One of the problems with these early air driven nail guns was the recoil. Now it wasn't um, until the double chamber of the nail gun um, become uh, incorporated within the design that it softened the impact of the nail gun. As you know the nail gun that we use today pretty much has zero recoil. It doesn't bounce off your wood or push your shoulder out of joint. Your nail guns we get today, they have very little recoil, if none at all really. And that evolved into the nail gun, pretty much the same as what we've got today, such as these four nail guns you see here. <laughs> and, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. In this case, we've got a 16, an 18 crown nailer, an 18 pin nailer or brad nailer, and then we have a 23 gauge pin nailer. Great tools. But that wasn't the end of it. There was other methods uh, evolved over the years regarding driving nails. 
with a handheld tool. One was the electromagnetic nail gun. They're still pretty popular and they're ideal for uh, in the upholstery trade etc because they're simple. There's just a cable, you plug them in, great for stapling and, and, and pin nailing or brad nailing. But now you have the likes of DeWalt, who've now made a cordless battery powered nail gun, purely battery, um, and they're very, very good. In fact, I might get one. But on site, if you're looking at roofing and um, sheet work in, in the construction industry, there's one particular name, is the Pazload. These Pazload nail guns have two, not one, power source. And they require one for ignition and one for combustion. A bit like the combustion engine, I suppose. But the um, combustion is provided by butane gas cartridges. Sometimes you buy them separately, sometimes they'll come with your nails. But also a rechargeable battery. And that rechargeable battery ignites the gas, creating an explosion, pushing the piston, pushing the hammer, pushing the nail. So with the pass load, it requires an explosion, a combustion of butane gas to drive the piston, whereas the pneumatic requires air. Now, Paslo themselves have been about for a while now, and there are other manufacturers of the cartridge type nail gun that requires gas, such as Atachi, they make one as well, and they're all very, very good tools. So, let's have an overview of the history of the nail gun in a chronological order. In 1860, was the start of the wire nail. With mechanisation and machinery, the stationary engine for instance, allowed for the production of wire nails from the 1860s. It's a simple little fastening and we still use it today. You know, whack it with a hammer, fix two bits of wood together. Then we got, in 1862, we got the Doug Manufacturing Company And then there's a big jump. It wasn't until 1892 Pearson painted his nail gun design. Then in the commercial Robbinsdale nailer. Then in 1944 we had Howard Hughes, uh, the world famous Spruce Goose Birchwood aircraft, which pretty much was nailed together. And because it was so big, there were so many nails, they looked for an efficient way of actually driving those nails to join the two pieces of wood together to build this very special aeroplane. And from that, Morris Pinus design was a pneumatic nail gun. So the Morris Pinus design, it led its way to um, new post-war nail gun designs. So in 1950, we got the pneumatic, pneumatic nail gun. And uh, pneumatic, pretty much led the way regarding commercial nail guns got the idea of collating nails became a reality and it wasn't until 1988 when Passload made their first patent claim now their patent claim was for the collation of their nails it was how the nails were collated it was quite a novel idea instead of the nails being collated by being a part of a strip on the hole, as you see here, the nails are collated not all the way down the nail itself, but just by the heads. And the nails themselves, they come off there like so, and they're not actually in contact with each other. These are say, you've got these floppy nails. So what they did is they then created a piece of paper that would bond all those nails and keep them at a, the correct distance apart. So in 1988, Paslode put their patent claim in for their design of, or their invention even, of their collated nails. So, 1989, Paslode's claim for the patent was rubber stamped. It was granted. Now, not much has really changed since then, apart from the tools have become a little bit more refined. But historically, the biggest difference is actually this year. In 2020, Paslode's patent is going to expire. So what we're going to see is, I believe, 
post-2020, we're going to be seeing a lot more manufacturers of nail guns producing more machines, probably at lower cut-down prices without having to pay patent charges to Pazload. So we hope that the prices will come down. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video on the history of the nail gun. And if you'd be most kind and click like and subscribe, and maybe click the little bell icon because then you'll get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket and that'll be me uploading a new woodworking video. Well, you managed to get to the end of my video. Well, either I must have grabbed your attention or you just couldn't be bothered to click off. If you'd be most kind and subscribe and maybe click the little bell icon because then you'll get a notification every time I upload a new woodworking video. And I know you'd be excited about that. So, hammer that like button, hammer that subscribe button and comment below. <laughs>